Hey guys, it's me, Chris Dale, back once more with another video. This time it's NADA 17. We're gonna solve this challenge. Seems to be something related to an SQL injection attack, potentially, based on what we have learned from previous challenges. Check to see if a username exists or not. So let's first check out the functionality of this application. So we give it a username of admin and it doesn't seem to return anything. So let's just check one more thing here. So I'm gonna make burp suit also intercept requests just so we can check the headers. So I'm intercepting my post here, username admin for this and it says response and it doesn't seem to have any information at all for us. So I don't see anything here that could reveal if admin exists or not. So it's basically just an empty screen. What about Natas? 18, which is the user for the next level, probably the one we need to get the password for. Same type of deal it seems like. So I'm gonna resend this request for this, and there's nothing. So, if there is a vulnerability here or not, it's probably gonna be a blind type of injection uh, that we gotta find. So, when exploring vulnerabilities like these, a vulnerability scanner will very often help you, or a good uh, fuzzing list containing a bunch of potential strings for attacks. Because even if we are successful in breaking out of an SQL here, there is no indicator that we're actually successful. For example, if I do uh, NAS18 and or like 1 equals 1 semicolon hash here, there's nothing that reveals to us if this is working or not. It's a fully blind injection, which is uh, pretty cool to be honest. Uh, these in the wild are hard to discover because we need to normally use some kind of timing attack to, to figure out if there's a vulnerability or not. So in order to discover timing attacks, what a lot of vulnerability scanners will do, they will inject strings like this, and for example, we do a tick and say sleep, and then we sleep for say 10 seconds, and then we do a semicolon and a hash or a dash dash to come out the rest. So the semicolon here is a query terminator and dash dash will come out the rest. And if all of a sudden the vulnerability scanner sees that we have one request that is taking, say for example here, it takes less than a second, and all of a sudden we have something that takes more than 10 seconds, that means that we have vulnerability. Uh, some vulnerability scanners will also inject stuff like this and for example, benchmark, benchmark some kind of function, say for example, MD5 or something, MD5 for example, the, the value one, and we'll do the MD5 say for example, a million times. And this will also take time, and by measuring that time taking from a normal request to a, to a attack request, we can basically figure out if there's a vulnerability or not. So in this case, let's try injecting say for example an AND, we don't want necessarily an OR here, but it would work with an OR as well. However, when discovering injections like these, I like to use AND. Uh, actually, uh, AND sleep, and I'm gonna go sleep with five seconds, and I'm just gonna do like uh, a little semicolon dash dash. That did not work, so I'm gonna do a semicolon and a hash. That did not work, I'm gonna replace this quote here with a, uh, this tick with a quote. Hit enter, and all of a sudden, my application waits. So all of a sudden, we had this lag here of about five seconds plus. Give it a one, and it lags for one second. This is the AND here, and this one also approves or, or tells us that NETAS, NETAS 18 is existing here. So a vulnerability scanner would likely do an OR here, because then we could have anything here, whatever, and we do OR sleep 1, which will return true in, the, in our case, but you'll still see that the function sleep is taking place here, and we can identify that there's a vulnerability here. So in our case, AND, if we add AND, and here, it returns immediately. That means that there is no user such as whatever, but there was a user called NATAS18 because all of a sudden now it sleeps for 10 seconds plus. So in order to exploit this, we gotta get the password for NATAS18, right? So um, I'm thinking that what we can do is we can bring this request into Intruder. Uh, not necessarily Intruder yet, let's bring it into the repeater. So action sent to repeater, and then I have my request here. And I'm gonna do a quote here plus, which is a space, and I'm gonna do and, and then I'm gonna see if the substring of password, the first character and only one character, is this one equal, say, an A. Then we do a semicolon, 
and we'll do a hash. So substring, the password field, the first character and only one character, are you equal an A? Because if that's the case, then we wanna wait for a given number of seconds. So how do we add the given number of seconds here? So now that's 18 is username and the substring is so-and-so, and then we do another and here, and sleep, say one second. So I'm gonna run this request now, and it returned immediately, 54 milliseconds, as we can see down here in the right, right corner. So that did not work. The first character of the password is not, it's not A, or there is no field called password. I mean, the password column could be something completely different. It could have a different name. And for that type of challenge, we would have to map out uh, the database layout, which we've done in previous challenges. So I'm not gonna do that in this case. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna be fussing this A here. I'm gonna put that, allocate that as some variable for the intruder. And I'm gonna say that all the possible characters for this character is gonna be a brute force list. So where's the brute force here? So let's see, simple list, add from list. Actually, it's this one, um, brute forcer. I'm gonna do one, one, and also I'm gonna do uppercase. And G H I K L M N O P Q R S T U V W X Y Z. So that turns into 62, which is uh, good. Uh, so next thing we gotta do is that my SQL is not case sensitive by default here. So we got to do a binary comparison here. Comparison here. So let's just see if this works or not. Ideally, I would also want to single thread this because in some cases the database, so you see I'm running with five threads here, which makes it quite fast. However, if this was a slow network, if this was a slow database, multiple threads here could cause the timings of each request to be a bit messed up. But as we can see here, my requests here are actually responding quite fast. They're all within like 50, uh, within the 50 milliseconds range here. And I don't have any requests which are returning more than one second. I added a column response completed, which is basically showing me the timings, but there is no columns that is indicating to me, sorry, no uh, timings here that is indicating to me that I was successful. So I probably got an error here. I need some uh, spaces here. So I'm gonna add pluses here. And so let's see, do we need to escape something else? Do a semicolon and sleep. Password could be still the wrong column, but I'm still guessing here. So I'm just gonna do response completed. Still out of luck. None of these requests are actually returning uh, more than a second. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna do just quickly, MySQL substring function. Maybe I have a typo in my substring function. And right now I'm loading uh, Google here through my burp suit, so it's a bit more laggy than, uh, than normal. So this actually looks like the way we have it. So string start length. And it's not working. So we do an and binary plus substring. Do an equal. Is it equal, equal? Isn't it just equal? Maybe my typo is here. So I do the attack again. Whoops, actually. I gotta be careful now. My recording device is taking a bit of my GPU here, so I gotta be careful. I don't wanna run the two, two attacks here. So column response completed. And all of a sudden, we have some more timings. So I had mistakes in my syntax. And I want to show you guys that, look, I, I don't always know the answer from before. I don't always have a syntax in my head. I use Google all the time. I make mistakes all the time. And that's fine as long as we can identify our mistakes and and be able to, to demonstrate effects uh, still. So uh, in my case, I had a typo here with the double, double equal. I also were missing some spaces here. And all of a sudden, you can see that I have one request that is one second, and I have these that are quite slow here. And I'm, I might have false positives here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take these four requests, I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna go request items again. And notice that these requests are now responding much faster. So that's a beautiful example of me being able to identify timings, even if there was a network congestion or my laptop was lagging there for a second. So even with that lag, I was able to just right click and request items again. And I can see that this, when a password is X here, every single time it's an X, I will have more than one second of lag. So, of sleep, basically of delay. So I'm thinking one second is 
fair enough, but I could also do a 0 0.5. So that's probably gonna be uh, a bit faster then. So there we go. Very easy way to see that we actually have a timing attack here. And um, I also now need to, I need two payloads here because I need to iterate through the entire, entire password. The password is normally 32 characters long here. So I'm gonna go with the stork here start this variable here. I'm going to go from 1 to 32 and I'm going to do a cluster bomb attack. So the first payload is going to be numbers from 1 to 32. Step through 1 each time. We don't need these parameters. Payload number 2 is going to be the grid parser. So I need to add uppercase again. Alright, one one character here, one character here, 62. Total number of 2,000 requests. It should be fine. I think we can leave it at five threads. And let's see what happens now. So we're going through the substring. We're going through now every possible part of the character of the characters of the password to check to see if it's equal an A. So you can see all the way up to 32 here. And then we check the first character, are you equals a B? And then the, the last character, are you equals a B? And so on. And we're going through this entire password here now. So you can see it's going quite fast over the wire is responding quite nicely here so we gotta wait we also gotta add a column here response completed and see if we have any high latency requests here and as you can see we do have these so for this i also want to have excel up and running and just like that the attack is done did a bit of cutting there to make sure that we can uh, we don't have to wait for all my timing attacks to be successful here so let's see, I got a couple of columns here and I'm gonna copy these. I'm just gonna control C and I'm gonna paste it into Excel. And I'm only copying the ones that have a high response time here. I'm gonna ignore the rest. All of these with low response time, it means that the SQL syntax was not proper. So from here, I'm gonna sort on column number B because that's the position of the character for each password. So sort on, sort on column, that's gonna be column number, this one. Yeah. For some reason, so actually what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna inject in here, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. And I'm gonna do it like F, G, H. And I'm gonna sort it like this instead. So sort on B, and this is the problem I had in my last query. My data has headers. Sort on the cell values, smallest, largest, and there we have one through all the way up to 32. So let's see if this is the correct password or not. So for this, I'm gonna open up Notepad, and I'm just gonna remove all these line feeds here. With CyberChef, we could do the same, obviously. I'm just going to do it manually here. CyberChef, which is a tool I've demonstrated in multiple of my previous videos. So this password seems to be 32 characters long. Let's check. So Natus18 does labs at natusoverthewire.org. Is that correct URL? Natuslabsoverthewire.org. So Natus Labs. So Natus here. And then we do labs. Natus18. And it worked. So I can't wait for the next level. I'm probably gonna do it back to back here. So I'll have two videos uploaded today. And thank you for watching guys. You can follow me on Twitter, of course, LinkedIn. If you add me on LinkedIn, please leave a comment while you're adding me, where you've seen me or how you know me. And also, obviously, I love your comments in my videos. Uh, those are quite a good motivation to make more videos. So thank you for listening and have a good hackity weekend. Bye-bye.